What's up, Buttercup? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is, as the title says, it's going to be my June 2024 reading wrap-up. And I went through 16 books. Note that I didn't say read, I just went through them. So we're going to go through the 16 books individually today. Not too in-depth, but maybe in the middle, depending on how much I'm feeling. Some of them might make me rant. I, sorry for anyone who loves these books, but I DNF two, which is not bad. And there are some that are uh, short stories and there are some that are 200 pages or less. So that's how I got through 16. And I did not sleep well last night, so I'm gonna have coffee. Please take a seat, get some coffee or tea or maybe just water add a little lemon. And let's begin with the first one. It is The Stillwater Girls by Minka Kent, and I gave that four out of five stars. At times it was very coincidental, <laughs> and sometimes also a little unbelievable. And the writing started out a little choppy in the beginning, like the first couple of chapters, but then it ended in a nice four stars, and I'm pretty sure, yes I did, <laughs> sorry, I did do a review on the Stillwater Girls, if you're interested. Number two, where are you going, where have you been, sorry, I also have really bad handwriting, <laughs> by Joyce Carol Oates, and that's three stars, I listened to it, and it's fine, it's average, I don't know what all the fuss is about. It's not great. <laughs> and also, I mean, this is probably very, very creepy back in the day, but yeah, I have been desensitized. So this wasn't a creepy story or anything like that. Number three, Bunny by Mona Awad. Four stars, finally got to it. I could not give it five stars because it took like, what, three months? <laughs> Yeah, and the book is like maybe 350 pages or less, so it shouldn't really have taken that long, but I did do a review on it. So if you want to go more in depth with why, I I did enjoy it. I think it's fascinating. Didn't give it five stars. That's on my channel. You might need to scroll just a little bit, but you'll find it. Number four, Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid. That is five stars. I listened to it. I did a review on it. It's not doing the best because like I spoil basically everything, <laughs> but it's not like I could talk to my husband about the tea and I know no one that read or listened to it. So I was just letting it all out with major spoilers. Sorry, but you know, if you're interested and you don't really want to read it or maybe you do, but you just like spoilers. I have a review on Evidence of the Affair. It is juicy, it's a soap opera. I gasped, that's why I gave it five stars. Number five, The Babysitter's Club by Kate Williams. I read that, but it's not rated. I was very uncomfortable, actually, by like the halfway point, I would say, because the comps are Buffy the Vampire Slayer and The Babysitter's Adventure Club, whatever. Uh, those movies from the 80s and 90s and I was like oh wow okay this is cool yeah um it's like ex almost I'm not gonna say exactly it's <laughs> it's nearly the same as Buffy the Vampire Slayer but that they're babysitters and they take care of you know the kids they babysit and they're not supposed to be violent but you know there was fighting. So it, I don't know. This was published, it went through, It's um, it's been out for a bit. I guess there's no copyright issue. I'm just, I'm baffled actually that it was released as is because it is really freaking close to Buffy and are you really gonna go up against Buffy the Vampire Slayer owners? Like I'm, I think it's maybe just Joss Whedon, but even then, if it's just Joss Whedon, oh, the copyright 
lawyers like I don't I would be very hesitant and therefore um, I didn't rate it very uncomfortable for me I skimmed the last few chapters and I was like this is Buffy the Vampire Slayer I don't I'm yeah okay <laughs> I I'm I'm baffled I'm honestly baffled Moving on to number six, Bound Feet by Kelsey Yu. It's three stars. That's for the Messed Up Book Club. Oh, and the Stillwater Girls is the Messed Up Book Club as well. I had high hopes and it was it was good. I think this was her first book. Very short and it needed to be expanded upon quite a lot because there were some things that were missing and you were like, all of us were like, hmm. I am actually interested in this stuff and what happened here and what's the explanation for this and so on and so forth and there's nothing, you know, because it's oh, like maybe 130 pages. And that's where I'm like, you could do a bit more with this. And usually I don't say that. Number seven, The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. It's not rated, I had no idea no idea what to rate it so I didn't that is the brilliance of being your own person <laughs> and just doing your own thing if I can't figure out a star rating for a book it's not gonna get rated but I did do a review because it's a love-hate relationship for the sun also rises interesting slow no plot it's very character focused but there are people that really like that and I was surprised that I liked it enough to do a review on it but surprises in life just make things more interesting number eight a wrinkle in time by Madeline Le Ingo sorry I'm French but not that French that's three stars it's like a children's classic sci-fi-ish fantasy. Interesting. Um, there were a lot of people that were complaining about the religion in it. And I noted like four or five times. But y'all didn't mention that there's also references to Buddha. <laughs> so, okay. It's mainly a uh, Christian or um, Abrahamic religious references but then there's buddhist references as well so if you're gonna focus on there's too much religion in this sci-fi fantasy-esque whatever children's classic literature novel then also mention buddhism but i don't know if you picked it up or if you're totally fine with buddhism and buddha i mean you know as an atheist not a fan of all religions so let's get on that and not be hypocritical actually did not have a problem yeah an atheist didn't have a problem it's from the 60s what do you expect like I don't <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> people are complaining about on Goodreads but beside of the whole controversy of this too much religion and the book it it's average it's good um, I was surprised that I liked it however I wasn't a fan of the main character <laughs> And I didn't realize that two out of the three children are actually, like, teenagers. And that's interesting, but I can see why it wouldn't be at all young adult. One, because it's the 60s, there was no such thing as young adult. And then two, it does not read as young adult. It reads as a ch child's book, but like an advanced reader child's book, right? Or a book that a parent reads to their children at night or you know something like that which used to happen more often <laughs> but I thought it was interesting enough that I kept going I thought it was gonna be a DNF and I wasn't gonna rate it but I made it to the end and I'm like hmm, okay interesting and there were parts where it was interesting with the sci-fi because Marvel also talks about like wormholes in the what is it the Terrasect or whatever yeah that thing and I was like oh look that 
contraption is mentioned in Marvel movies, so I like I have the idea of what it looks like. And then I asked my husband who reads hard sci-fi and sometimes soft sci-fi and he's like yeah you know that's kind of used in soft sci-fi just you know to get over the science part and then we're gonna move on to like the you know plot and characters and I'm like yeah I can see why this would be a soft sci-fi because there's also like a I feel like there's a little bit of fantasy when they go to other planets and it's for children a nice surprise that it was good for a three star rating. I'm not gonna finish this series though. I'm good for now or probably ever. Number nine, The Butchering Art by Lindsay Fitzharris. Five star, that's a nonfiction biography on Joseph Lister. Just did a review on that, so go check it out. I rarely write nonfiction books. However, I could not help myself with Lindsay's book, therefore you should check out the review because they go into why. Number 10, The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornick. Gornick, Gornick, sorry. Um, that's a DNF not rated. In the beginning it was very sing-song and that's fine. I'm not into purple pro or flowery language where like a whole paragraph is one sentence and I'm like, what did you say? You didn't really say anything, but you think it's pretty. Sing-song is different category that I can accept as like it's pretty it's in a sing-song way but it's not flowery and purple prose and I was I was into it for the first uh chapter maybe two chapters and then we get to the dialogue and it's extremely modern and it threw it all off for me and then <sighs> Loki so <laughs> I am a bit tired, I'm gonna be honest with you all, of the Marvel version of Loki. Where it's like, oh, he's like good inside, but he's also a trickster. That's not Loki in the Norse religion, text, legends, myths. It's not, it's not. Loki is a trickster. You're not supposed to like Loki. You're supposed to see what he does and says, oh, that's not good, I'm not going to do that. So, you can do what you want, obviously, but I'm going to DNF Marvel Loki in any way, shape, or form. And I'm not a fan of Loki in the Marvel movies. It's overdone. It's, it's so overdone, I can't. I want a trickster god. I want someone that is actually true to the myths and legends and text of that culture and religion. Please and thank you. I don't know why it's so hard. I think it's hard actually because people are not pagans, okay? And they did not grow up pagan. And if they did, different topic, but let's say like they did not grow up pagan, they did not grow up studying these texts, they did not grow up around these uh, texts or anything to do with the pagan religions. I have a little bit more in-depth knowledge because I grew up neo-pagan and so I really follow the religious text um, or the um, myths and legends because they're there for a reason they've been around many times for thousands of years why am i going to change it because it's it's popular <laughs> it's stuck around for many many generations centuries i'm not going to change it but if i do then it's probably going to be a little darker <laughs> I mean, just like in daniel's curse i followed the Irish mythology of all those deities and I made the goddess of war, fate, and death, the Morgane, as she is and I've had people like, oh she is nasty and like, she is the goddess of war, fate, and death. What do you expect? I think people just want to make deities no matter if they're a trickster god or a father god or a mother goddess into i don't know like 
lesser versions of themselves like the writer lesser versions of themselves or I don't know it's just too much for me number 11 is cry wolf by Patricia Briggs that's four stars and that's like the prequel sequel something or other uh, from the Mercy Thompson series but it follows Anna and Charles up in Montana with Bram who's the Merrick of the whole North American werewolves and I give it four stars instead of five because I can't do the alpha a-hole thing like Charles was freaking annoying <laughs> I don't really stay for the romance necessarily some people love the alpha a-hole trope I cannot but I still stick around because basically everything else is good number 12 the historians by Cecilia Ekbach and that's a DNF not rated there were three prologues from three different people in two different points of view tenses and then the first chapter had tense problems and it was just info dumping and I don't know how that was published and apparently there was a point to that that the writer explains somewhere and no no thank you but no number 13 gone to see the river man by christopher triana and that's four stars that is the third book for the messed up book club that we read in june and i did a review on that on my channel if you want to check it out Number 14, The House in the Corellian Sea by T.J. Klune. It's four stars. There were some repetitiveness issues with the first half of the book, and then at a certain point halfway through, it was like written a bit differently. Like the first half was campy, like extra campy. And the main character said phrases over and over and over and over again and there were writing choices that were used over and over and over and over again to make him seem very passive but you don't need to use one or two phrases or words even so many damn times for the reader to understand that this main character is passive and now i don't know if it was done on purpose or not but the second half that was not seen at all so are we having some editing issues a little bit from the first half to the second half or was that done intentionally because now the main character in the second half has found basically his home away from home and he's more comfortable and therefore he's not using certain words and phrases but it's not in first person it's in third so that's why i couldn't give it five stars but i love lucy we love to see lucifer as a little kid <laughs> at least i do and i really love the supportive aspect of that novel and the cover is gorgeous number 15 the bookshop and the barbarian by morgan stang it's not rated now the cover is gorgeous. It screams cozy fantasy. It also does say cozy fantasy. However, it is satirical cozy fantasy regarding D&D. &D. So there are jokes in there that I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't duped. And I don't think other people are duped. It's just that it wasn't very clear that it was satirical. It is definitely cozy fantasy, but it is joking a lot on Dungeons and Dragons tropes to the extreme. And cozy fantasy is usually based on D&D &D characters and, you know, some other tropes. But this is making fun of it where you have to know the game to get all the jokes and I don't play D&D. &D. So that's why I didn't rate it, but I finished it. And lastly, we're finally here, people. Number 16, Ariadne by Jennifer Saint is three stars. Oh, it was so sad. 
three stars. I mean, it was good, but then it's like, mm, this isn't a feminist retelling because because <laughs> you could have made um, Ariadne become a goddess at the end, which that is an ending, but she is instead dead. <laughs> if that's a spoiler, I'm so sorry, but um, this is a Greek myth retelling, so... <laughs> Yes, her sister messed me up, but it is part of the mythology. And there was a lot, oh my god, a lot of retelling of myths within the book. And it's like, okay, great. I'm reading a specific book about this specific uh, woman turned like constellation goddess kind of thing. I don't need to know four other myths that take up like 20 pages, like 10 to 20 pages per person. Let's just stick with her Ariadne. I don't know, that must have been a hot take because oh my god, that was a big problem in this book. Also, there was a lot of purple prose, unfortunately, which was not the case in Electra. I have Electra. Oh no, it's over there. I have Electra by Jennifer Saint. I gave that four out of five stars. I think that was a better book. That one had uh, a little bit of a flowery language, but it did not do what Ariadne did, which is what I just explained. That was sad. That was sad. I was excited. And I'm kind of going to hold off a little bit on reading more Jennifer Saint's books. I'm just waiting for Madeline Miller, honestly, but we don't know where she is. Yeah, I, I would agree that I don't see Ariadne, this version, you know, the Jennifer Saint book, as a feminist retelling. <laughs> because... Look, there are different uh, endings that you could have chosen, and you chose to have her die instead of someone, uh, there's a particular person that uh, turns her into a goddess and then, you know, lives forever and always. I mean, she's in a constellation in the sky, but that's not, she's kind of conscious, but she's not, and it's, yeah. Um, there was no hope, okay? There was no hope for her sister. I totally understand. And I was surprised when her sister's point of view came in. But yeah, it's, it's a thing. It's there. We're just moving along right now. And we're going to wrap up this video on my reading wrap up for June. That was longer than uh, expected, but I think this has been one of the few times where I've gotten to 16 books. Not read, just gotten to. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.